Hi everybody, so today I'm going to do a little tutorial on how to do different textures for different planets. I've had a lot of people who have asked, how do you do this texture, or how do you do that texture, or how do you make your planets look so cool? So this is going to be a really simple, uh, basic, beginner's tutorial. It's actually going to be based off of probably the second painting that I ever did. Um, it's just going to be a simple galaxy uh, painting with a bunch of different types of planets. That way I can show off different techniques for different textures. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to make sure that we prepare our area here. I've got a big old poster board here. It's glossy on one side. I've got it taped down underneath like, like this. Just get some tape, put it down there. Some people like to tape off the edges and it creates a nice little border around it. Me personally, I don't really care for that look, but you know, teach their own, their own personal preferences. I've also heard a lot of people ask about what kind of paints to use. Um, I use a variety of different types of paints. I use the uh, Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch, the Two Times, use the uh, Krylon Color Master. I've got some of uh, this, this Rust-Oleum, the Gloss Enamel. And then uh, one of my favorite ones that I use for shading is actually this uh, Project Source Black. It's just a uh, generic, I think I picked it up at Walmart or Lowe's or Home Depot someplace. Uh, but it works really, really well for getting some nice shadowy effects on your planets. You're also going to need some different stencils for your planets. Uh, lids work great. I've got this lid from one of those Christmas cookie tins. I've got some... Uh, coffee lids, a plastic Kool-Aid lid, even your spray caps work. Just find something that's round and has a nice thin edge like this. Now you can use things like uh, like this here, but because you see how it indents like that right there, you got this bit of a lip there, it can be kind of tricky to work with and try and make sure that you've got good coverage. So I tend to, tend to steer away from using things like this or pots and pans. Uh, for that very reason. So just when you're looking at different stencils, make sure you pick something that's got a nice flush edge. Now the first thing that we want to do with this painting, uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to do a couple of different planets here. So we want to lay out where we're going to put our planets essentially. Where do we want our planets to be? So I'm going to say, let's go with a uh, right thing. Do there. I'll do a little one here and overlap it with that one so I can do a real quick little tutorial on how to do overlapping planets. Do one there, there, and then we'll just put one right there. Now the next thing we do is we take one of our cans of spray paint and we're going to Make sure that it's shooken up really, really well. This one's almost empty. And just kind of spritz around it. This is going to give you just a general idea of where your planets are going. And so that way you can set some reference points. Now I'm going to leave this space open here to do some sort of neat nebula, galaxy type effect. And then we'll just pick a planet and start going with it. We'll uh, start with this one up here. And just pick a couple of different colors that you like. I'm going to go with a green. And then this uh, spa blue. Always make sure you shake up your cans really, really well. And then I'll go with some, where's my white? Should I go with this green? Now some people like to warm up their cans beforehand. I live in Arizona, it's a hundred and stupid outside today, so I don't really need to warm up my cans. But the idea of warming up, up is it makes the paint flow easier.
Okay, just put a little bit down. Do some glue on top of that. And then do some white on top of that. Now there's all sorts of different things you can use to make your textures. And I'm gonna show off a couple of different techniques and ways. You can use magazine sheets, you can use uh, plastic, like shopping bags, something like that. But we're gonna, for this one, take your magazine sheet, crunch it up really, really well, smooth it out, then just lay it over the top, and move your hand back and forth, lift. And that'll give you that really cool texture. Now the cool thing about it is if you don't really like that, or if it's not quite the look you're trying to achieve, you can always just add a little bit more paint. Maybe you do this blue. More white. And you keep doing that until you get the texture that you like. Now the next step is we're going to wait for that to dry a little bit and so we'll move on to the next planet. I'm going to start with this one down here. Let's do some of this coral one. And a plum. And then let's go with some of this uh, ocean breeze blue. This one, I'm going to take the magazine sheet and instead of crunching it up, I'm just going to lay it down flat and run my fingers on it. And that'll give you that kind of an effect. And I think that one turned out actually pretty cool, so we're going to keep that how it is. Now we can kind of come back to this one and it should be pretty dry. So now that it's kind of dry, we want to start putting some of our shadows and highlights on some of them. We always want to pay attention to where our light source is coming from. Since I'm going to be having it come from here, all of my planets, the shadows are going to be on the outsides of them. So we do our shadowing, just like that, right on the outside of the planet. And then for our highlights, we take our white. And same thing. And then you also want to wait for it to dry because if you put the stencil on before it's dry here i'll just show you with this real quick i can always fix it later but if you put it on before it's dry when you go to lift it you're going to get these ugly rings around it so you want to avoid that by making sure that you let it dry completely before you start putting the stencils on so but if you notice you're starting to get that real simple easy fix just kind of go back over it again So while that's drying and that's drying, let's work on another planet. So this one here, let's try doing some brown. Dark gray. And then I'm going to do some of the sage green on top of it. This one I'm going to use a technique with a plastic bag. So you just take your plastic bag, lay it over the top, run your fingers across, and lift up. Now down in this corner over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple of overlapping planets. Now I have another video that kind of shows the technique on how to do overlapping planets. 
And there's several different types of techniques that you can do to do it. Uh, this is just going to be one that I'm going to do that I choose that I really like doing. It makes it really, really easy to do. So for this one, so we'll take some green. Take some blue. Take some white. I'm going to take my magazine sheet. I'm going to scrunch it up just a little bit on this one, not as tight as I did on the other one. And it gives us that kind of an effect. Now once more over the top of that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of my white and I'm going to do a very, very light coating to kind of give it a look of like clouds. So maybe just a little bit like that. Now while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'll come back and do the shading on this one. I just bought this can the other day, and I'm really not excited with how this one's turning out as far uh, compared to my other whites that I've used. I actually prefer this one, the Krylon white, works a lot better. As you can see, this is starting to get a really bad reaction. And you get these reactions because of the uh, paint, the different types of paints kind of dry differently and at different times. And so a lot of times it'll be a paint underneath that that's drying quicker than the paint on top. Or vice versa, the paint on top is drying quicker than the paint on the bottom. It's kind of causing it to crack and get all sort of so weird like that. It can give you some really cool effects. Like this I'm going to kind of leave because I kind of like the effect that it's leaving right there. Uh, but it can also ruin a planet too. So just cover it up. Now I'm going to come back to this one down here. Do my shadowing on that. Some highlight. Okay. Now I'm going to start covering up some of these ones. I'll put that one there. Uh, wait, it was this one that was down here. This one here. Just kind of match it up to where you like it. Now while I'm waiting for that one to dry, let's do this one up here. This one I'm going to do kind of a, like a Jupiter looking type of planet. So we'll go with some yellow. It's red. Orange. Yeah, always make sure you shake up your cans really, really well. So I'm going to do just a line of the yellow there. Then we'll go a line of red. A line of orange. Just some more yellow. Do, just do some of this red. And then cover the whole thing with white. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our magazine paper. I like to fold it in half, make it a little bit smaller, easier to work with. Just put it up on one side here and just swipe across and remove that paint. Something else you can do too is let's take a little bit of red. Like that. And a little quick wipe. There's a cool little red streak right there. Okay, now in this one over here, I'm going to do. Green and purple. And we'll 
own some orange. This technique's a little different. Uh, I'm going to also do this technique again for my galaxy that I'm going to put in the middle here. But take your paper, you can fold it up if you want, put it on there, and just turn it. So I'm going to wait for that to dry for a minute. In the meantime, while I'm waiting for those two to dry and put those stencils on, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do my galaxy here in the middle. Oh, I still have one more planet to do. I completely forgot about that. So, cover that one up. Now for here, for this other planet that we're going to do, let's do some green. And kind of make sure you want to get around that stencil. Red. I'm going to top it off with some blue. And then white. Now this technique for doing these overlapping planets like that, you'll just take your plastic bag, lay it over on top, and when you're running your fingers across, make sure you work your fingers around the stencil that you have laid for your other planet, just to kind of make sure you get the uh, texture up to the edge there. And then you peel it off, and you get something that kind of looks like that. And also, it's a te uh, technique that works really, really well for doing uh, eyeballs. And in a future video of mine, I'm going to do a painting that's going to have a really cool looking eyeball in it. Uh, that's going to be the technique that I'm most likely going to use for that. Uh, but that's, uh, that's how you do it. Now we'll go ahead and we'll shade this. Now what I want to do with this one is I want to do my, my cheapo black for the initial shading. Then I'm going to take my good black, and it's a bit of a much deeper black, and get the rest of it. And that will give you a little bit of a fade effect for the shadow. It looks kind of cool. And you can see the two different planets there. I'm going to take this one and lay that one on top. Okay. And that one, cover up all my planets. Now I'm going to do the middle here. For this one, I use a couple of different shades of blue. I use my navy blue. Brilliant blue, then my spa blue, and I'm probably also going to use this ocean breeze too. You start off with the navy blue, followed by brilliant blue, followed by the spa blue. Take your magazine sheet, lay it on top, and give it a good swirl. You can go around a couple of times. And move it. And 
Now what I'm going to do here is I need my black. My good black here. And you want to fill in the painting. Now you can do the whole thing black if you want, but what I like doing actually is mixing the black with my blue. Actually, let me use my navy blue. So I'll mix the black with the navy blue as I'm going around. Oop, gotta watch out for that. That may have just ruined the whole painting. Hmm. I'll stick a can on that to hold that down. Now what I'm going to do here for this part is I'm actually going to take my blue and my black and kind of alternate them around to blend them into the uh, environment. Now while I'm waiting for the rest of this to dry, I'm going to be watching for some of the errors you have with the mixing of the paints where you can start to see some spots drying, you can see some of the underlying paint coming up. So I just kind of keep a little bit of an eye on it and as it starts coming up, I just start covering it up a little bit. This part can take a little bit of practice to get used to. Sometimes I still screw this one up, but I'm gonna put a little light right there in the middle. So you wanna typically do a couple of practice spritz off the side to make sure you got it down. Maybe put it right over the middle, boom. So while that's drying, what next step I'm going to do is I'm going to put my gloves on. Some people always work with gloves on, and I only do it when I'm doing this part because it can be a little messy. I don't mind a little bit of paint getting on my fingers, but this gets a lot of paint on your fingers. We're going to do some stars. Now there's several different ways to do stars. Everybody has their own preferences. The way that I like to do it is to take your fingers like this, spray, just coat them with the white. Give it a good flick off to the side to get the big globs off, and then flick it all over your painting. So again, just... It's a really fun, easy way to do some stars. You can even mix it up and do different colors as well if you want different colored stars. Like I'll take some of this uh, gloss gum drop. It's like a light purple. Same thing. Coat your fingers. One good flick off the side, and then. That's good for the stars. Now next what I'm going to do is kind of uh, some white bursts coming out of this. Uh, pretty much all you need is some, some white paint and a straight edge. I've got this uh, piece of uh, plastic, I guess, uh, that I found. But people, you can use like an actual straight edge or whatever, just some sort of straight edge. You're going to take your white this you're gonna be careful to spray on this not on the painting so bring it down and 
and that'll give you that ray of light coming off of it. Now, I mean, we could say this is done, or we could try and find something else to do with it. Uh, I'll show you one other technique that a lot of people like doing to kind of make your planet stand out a little bit. Take your white, and you're going to spray on the edge of the lid here. And you'll see that gives you a really neat little kind of glow effect around it. I'm not going to bother doing that with all of it. I just wanted to show the technique because I'm not, I don't really want it on this painting. So we can go ahead and remove our stencils. Now we're just about done. Uh, next couple of steps we're going to need our clear coat for. First thing we want to do is take our clear coat. If I can remember where I put there it is. And then just somewhere off in the corner, kind of make it a little bit wet. The clear coat makes it wet again, so it makes it workable. And then put your signature. It's a work of art, it needs a signature. So put your signature down in the corner. Now, I'm in the desert, it's really, really hot outside, so I don't need to worry about trying to dry it quickly or anything like that. But one thing that a lot of people do to quickly dry it, to do the next layer or to seal in the paint, is apply heat to it. It's really fun, so I'll show the technique here, but you can take a clear coat, dryer. helps when it's not windy. But just like that, and that'll seal in the paint. And then just apply a couple of coats of the clear coats on top of it. That'll make it nice and shiny. And there we are. It's all finished. Showed a couple of different textures, different ways to do some different techniques. Come down here, get a little closer so you can see some of these planets close up. Now if you have any questions about anything, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Be sure to like, subscribe, share this with all your friends, and as always, thanks for watching.